Hi, my name is Tommy Hodgins. You may know me from my experiments with element queries and EQCSS. Today I'm going to show you one way to define custom JavaScript powered at rules inside your CSS style sheets. And by this I mean we'll be writing 100% valid CSS that can be parsed and read by a web browser without doing anything, that can also be read by JavaScript and used to run the plugins needed to make that code work. To do this, we're going to use the at supports at rule in CSS. And we're actually going to use it a little bit off label. We're going to use it differently than it might have been intended to be used, but it works. So with at supports, you're able to write a custom at rule that contains other CSS rules and test for a feature that the browser may or may not know about. If the browser doesn't successfully have this feature, it won't do anything with the code inside. And that's exactly what we're counting on to use or maybe pro more properly abuse this feature uh, for use with JavaScript. So I'm gonna hop over to our file. It's not very long. It's about 40 lines of code with the demo in it. And I'm gonna show you how we'll use the JS and CSS plugin and the element query plugin for JS and CSS um, but we're gonna only write CSS in order to make use of it. So what this code here is doing is it, it is going to extract the extra information that we put in CSS and eventually turn that into the function call that we need to this plugin. Now, normally to use this plugin, I'm gonna to go to its homepage here. Uh, normally this would be something that you would do from JavaScript. So you're importing the plugin in JavaScript and then to use it, you're writing a function here that calls the plugin as a function, you're supplying a selector, you're supplying an object with one or more conditions, and then the final thing is this string which contains all of the CSS rules. So if the condition is true on the tag matching the selector, this at rule applies to the document. So this is a perfect candidate for testing a custom at rule defined using JavaScript but written in CSS. So let's see what we can do to free this from JavaScript and actually have it be written inside our CSS. All right, hopping over to the editor, you can see I've got an HTML input tag here. I've pulled in the JS and CSS plugin as well as the element query plugin for JS and CSS. And below I have all the code that we're gonna use in this demo. So let's go ahead and define our custom at supports rule. So here I'm going to start our first condition with dash dash js dash and then anything that I include after this will be parsing out as the function name. So I'm going to use element. I'm going to define another argument here and another one that we can use to run the function. And now I can include a CSS style sheet that includes rules that would be applied when these conditions are true. So now I'm going to log the rule to the console so we can explore the information that was parsed by the browser when it read this CSS. So here we have the CSS supports rule, and we can see the condition text that was read by the browser. We can see that there is one rule inside of it. We have the full CSS text, which includes the at supports, the conditions, as well as the group body rule. And that's all the information that we need. So here, we're gonna parse out the name of the function and call that the variable at rule. So we're gonna grab everything inside the first set of brackets after the dash dash js dash. So here that is element. For the conditions, we create a new array and then we look for anything in the condition text that has space and space, a pair of brackets, and then we're gonna grab everything inside that and push that into the conditions array. For the body rule, we're gonna take the CSS text, which includes at supports, as well as all of the condition text. We're gonna remove those from the beginning 
and then take the brackets off the start and end. And then what we're able to do is we're able to call uh, JS and CSS with a new function that's written for element with our selector placed here, our conditions placed here, and our body rule placed here. So if we test this out in the browser, we should see it apply when we type five or more characters. So even though we've expressed that in CSS, it's actually JavaScript that's running that custom at rule. Let's define another rule in here so you can see that it's actually applying to elements that aren't even the ones that are being tested. So here I've created a div. And when these conditions are true, when the input has at least five characters, we're going to say that this div is hot pink. So this is truly an entire style sheet that is being wrapped by a custom rule. So that's how you can write custom at rules in CSS, even when they rely on JavaScript functions in order to work. And that's one way that you can extend CSS using JavaScript while still writing 100% valid CSS and 100% valid JavaScript. Thank you so much for watching. If you could dispatch a new mouse click or touch start event on the like button, I'd be grateful. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos about pushing the limits of CSS.